I'm going to cover four points. First of all is the warming we've experienced in the last 50 to 100 years. Is it un unprecedented? Secondly, and this is the most important question on global warming, is is the climate system that sensitive to the CO2 we're putting into the atmosphere? Third point, are climate models really that accurate and can we trust them as predictors of warming? And then my fourth and final point, how do we explain the warming over the last hundred years? Okay, this is the scientific consensus from the IPCC. Probably most of you are familiar with this. Most of the observed increase in temperature since the mid-20th century is very likely due to anthropogenic greenhouse gases. Now, what's interesting about this is that no serious effort has ever been made to look for natural sources of global warming. It has, for the most part, been assumed, just assumed, that global warming is man-made. This is a reconstruction of the last 2,000 years of temperatures published by Craig Lowley in 2007. And all he did was to take 18 previously published temperature proxies and just average them all together, just sum them up. And, and, uh, and this is a plot of the results. And what it shows is that it does not seem like there is any average climate. The climate is always warming or cooling. So here's, here's the last 100 years. Yes, we've seen strong warming. This is the proxy data. This dotted line I've added, that's from thermometers. OK? But as you see, it's just as dramatic of warming as this, or that, or that because the temperature is always going up and down. And of course, we have some historical events, Vikings in Greenland, and then the Vikings ended their civilization in Greenland, the Little Ice Age. I do not think that the warming today is unprecedented. It may be unusual, uh, very strong. I doubt that we are as warm now as we were during the medieval warm period because 1998, was a record warm year, but it's only a single year. We can't tell what single years were back here. These are 30-year averages, and there were probably El Ninos and La Ninas occurring, and there were probably spikes in temperature that went up here. We just don't know. There's no way to know. So if this warming, our recent warming in the last 100 years, is due to increasing carbon dioxide. What caused all of this? Okay, this is the very basics of global warming theory. Just the most fundamental thing. To cause global warming, there are two basic ways to cause global warming. Either you can increase the amount of sunlight absorbed by the Earth. Okay, now you don't need an increase in sunlight to do that. You could do it by decreasing the clouds. Okay, the second way is decrease the amount of infrared radiation emitted to space. And this is supposedly what is occurring with man-made global warming is that we're decreasing the loss of infrared radiation to outer space, and it's causing a warming. Now, everyone agrees, both skeptics and the IPCC, that increasing carbon dioxide is by itself too weak to cause substantial global warming. We all agree with that. 
In order to get a lot of global warming, you've got to have changes in the climate system, such as changes in clouds, changes in water vapor, that are a result of that little bit of warming that then amplify the warming, and that's, that's called feedbacks. And all of the IPCC models now have positive feedbacks. They take the little bit of warming from more CO2 and amplify it bigger, bigger, depending on how strong the positive feedbacks are. So here's a plot of different models and IPCC models and how much warming they produce by 2100, assuming a certain amount of additional increase in carbon dioxide. And the amount of warming that they produce depends on the positive feedbacks. So this model has very strong positive feedbacks. This model has weak positive feedbacks. And if there were negative feedbacks, it would actually reduce the warming from the extra CO2. Okay? So if there were negative feedbacks, it could actually minimize the warming. So all of the models are predicting positive feedbacks. But does nature really work this way? This is what I spend most of my time working on, is trying to figure out from satellite measurements of the Earth, how does nature work? Now we can estimate feedbacks using the Earth orbiting satellites that we now have up there. The United States has spent many billions of dollars to build a number of satellites that have been launched since about 2001 to measure all kinds of things related to climate. Okay? This is the Aqua satellite, and I am the lead scientist on this instrument, the Advanced Microwave Scanning Radiometer. Now, to estimate feedbacks, we need to measure two basic things. This radiant exchange with the Earth between sunlight absorbed, emitted infrared, because those are usually pretty much in balance. The amount of sunlight being absorbed is usually balanced by the amount of infrared radiation going out. But there are variations in that. So sometimes the Earth gives off more radiate, maybe it loses radiation, sometimes it gains radiation. And the temperature changes also. And we need to know how the radiant energy change varies with the temperature change. Okay. I hate to use graphs, but hopefully I won't make too many people angry. What we need to know is as the average temperature of the Earth increases, how much additional energy is lost to space? Okay, This is the most important question in global warming. This is not some side issue. This is not some peripheral issue. This is the most important question in global warming. As the Earth warms, how much additional energy will it lose to space? Because as the Earth warms, it gives off more infrared radiation. But then you can have these cloud changes, which are changing how much infrared is lost, how much sunlight is being absorbed. All of this is mixed together in the climate system. And we need to know what this relationship is between this and this. Now, as you can, this is some real data. These are three month global averages from the Terra satellite. Okay, it's about seven and a half years. And as you can see, the, the data is all over the place. So it's very hard to see a relationship. And this is typical. This is typical. People have done this before with previous satellites, the Earth Radiation Budget Satellite, for instance. And you find a wide range of relationships, and the data is scattered all over. So what kind, do you draw a line through there like that? Uh, this would be strong positive feedback.